Hello and welcome to another Creative Coding video. Today we're going to be looking at repetition again and practicing the idea that we saw for the first time in the previous video. Repetition is really important and actually quite powerful so it is worth us looking at it at least you know, a couple of times. This time we're going to again keep the code in our example very simple but I'm hoping the results are a little bit more uh, interesting and pleasing. Um, I certainly like them, I like this example and I'm um, quite excited about sharing it. So let's dive in. I'm logged into Open Processing as usual and I've set up the simple instruction in the setup section and made sure that the simple JS library is enabled. It's what we always do when we start a sketch and if you're unfamiliar have a look at the first two videos in the playlist. In our draw section I've written some code already to get us going. None of this code is new. Um, all of these instructions we've looked at before but I'll we'll, we'll work through them again just to make sure we're comfortable. So we are setting up a couple of variables one's called X and one's called Y and inside those variables I'm putting in a number which I'm asking the computer to pick at random and inside X will be a random number chosen from the range 0 to 800 so X could be 5, could be 250, could be 799 but it won't be 810 or 900 because that's outside the range. Similarly X We'll have a random number chosen for it and that can go up to 600. I'm also picking a third, um, I'm also creating a third variable called size and this one is also a random number but chosen from a much smaller range 0 to 25 and then I'm using all three of those variables to draw a circle and the circle is at x, y, those are the coordinates x across and y down and it's going to have a radius of size. Now just um, we've used um, these numbers before so it's worth kind of reminding ourselves why we often do that and that's because the canvas on which we draw is 800 across and 600 down. Let's have a look at that just to remind ourselves. So this is a picture showing the canvas on which we can draw shapes. And you can see it's 800 across and it's 600 down. So when we pick a position and we say horizontally it's got to be between 0 and 800 and vertically it's got to be between 0 and 600, that point can only ever be on the canvas. It won't be outside here because this will have an X coordinate bigger than 800 which would fall outside the range and this one will have a Y coordinate bigger than 600 which will fall outside the range. So that's why we often pick those numbers in our uh, ranges. So X and Y will always be on the on the canvas. Great so let's run the code it shouldn't surprise us the result. It's uh, a circle, there's a tiny one there. <laughs> that is really tiny. I thought nothing had been drawn. <laughs> so there's a tiny circle, must be a very small size, on the canvas. Let's run it again. That's another small circle. Run it again. This one's somewhere else on the canvas. And that one's over there. And that one's over there. And this one's a bit bigger. So that's 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 something we've seen before. We've we've you know been drawing circles at random locations on the canvas quite a lot actually. Um, let's let's turn this into a function because we want to be able to repeat drawing this circle. Let's call it a bubble. So let's write a function. Just remember, functions are just a way of wrapping up useful code and giving it a name so we can call it again and again. Let's call our function bubble. And 
and let's cut all that code and pop it in there. So now our code is inside a function called bubble. And if we call bubble, it should draw a little bubble. Just like before. Yep, there's one. Run it again and again and again. So it's doing the same thing, but we're now calling it by its name. And the benefit of that was that we could do it two times or three times. That's a really tiny little bubble there. I can hardly see it. Two very small ones and one medium one. Another one. Okay, so it's drawn little bubbles. Now let's start improving this code a little bit. Now some of those bubbles were being cut by the edge of the canvas. The way to fix that is to make sure that the bubbles don't go too close to the edge. And one way to do that is to make sure that their coordinates are chosen from a range that's always within the canvas but not right up to the edge. So let's look at that. At the moment our coordinates for those bubbles could be anywhere on that entire canvas which is 800 and 600 down. Instead why don't we say the x coordinate has to be limited so it's from 100 to 700 not from 0 all the way up to 800 so not from there to there it's actually going to be limited for it to be in the range 100 to 700 and the same for the vertical direction. If we say the vertical direction y is going to be picked from a range that goes from 100 all the way up to 500, that means those points will be in this area. They won't be here won't be here, won't be here, and won't be here, because those points fall outside that range. Let's try it. Hmm, how do we get it to pick from a range that has a minimum, not just an upper number? Well, we actually provide two numbers. We say, instead of 0 to 800, we say from 100 to 700. So when we provide two numbers to a random number, it'll pick a number that's between these two, including those two as well. So it could be 100, but it won't be 99. It could be 699, it could be 700, but it won't be 701. So let's do the same for the y coordinate. That was going to go from 100 up to 500. Let's try running that a few times and hopefully none of those bubbles now will be cut off by the edge of the canvas. Seems to be working. Let's use our repeat instruction to draw lots of those bubbles. Now if we wanted to draw, say, 200 of them, we don't want to copy and paste bubble 200 times. That's not very elegant. So last time we, we, we came across the repeat instruction. And the way it worked was we say repeat 200 times the bubble function. So repeat 200 times. What do we repeat 200 times? this thing, which is our bubble function, which is all this code. So let's run that. Hmm. We can much more clearly see now that none of those bubbles has been cut off by the edge of the canvas. 
that's just an experiment to go back to what it was before 800 and 600 just to see the bubbles being cut off yep there's a cut off there it's cut off there cut off there definitely cut off at the bottom there so our change to pick from a range is working now let's look at that picture again now I like the bubbles that are sort of medium sized and larger but the very tiny ones I'm not so keen on they look more like dust really or specks on the screen <laughs> that I should be wiping off maybe we can apply the same idea and give the circles a minimum size so that the radius goes from say 10 to 25 so it's never smaller than 10 so we never get the very tiny circles let's try that yep that's that's producing a bunch of bubbles and none of them are too small yep that's kind of nice that's actually nice as it is isn't it I quite like that we could stop there let's add some color now I could pick a color like fill I don't know pink to have pink bubbles <laughs> what's wrong with pink bubbles pink bubbles that's quite nice but it'd be nice to have a palette of colors maybe two or three colors so why don't we get the function to pick one color from three at random so let's go through this quite slowly step by step because it might look a little complicated but it's not really so let's first write a list of colors so we've got pink there now earlier on we did do this but it's it's a long time ago so we'll remind ourselves when we write lists when we create lists we use square brackets so here is a list with only one item in it which is pink if we have more than one item we separate them with commas so let's say pink yellow that's a list of two items in that list is pink and yellow and let's add another one hmm let's say light green just 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 to try it now to pick one of these at random we use the random instruction not random number random so when we say random with a list inside the brackets we're passing that random instruction a list and we're asking it to choose one from that list okay let's draw a picture of that actually if we have a list of one item second item third item if we ask the random instruction to pick from the list it'll take that list which is this thing here and it will pick one from that list so it could pick that one or it could pick that one or it could pick that one and we don't know which one it's going to pick and there's never really an order if we have a shorter list with just two it'll always pick from one of the two if you have a very long list it'll pick from the list but the chance of picking one will be smaller because the list is longer great so now that we've picked a color from a list we need to use the color and to use that we use the fill instruction Do you remember fill always had a color inside it like fill red now we're saying whatever random chose is passed a fill that looks complicated doesn't it <laughs> let's uh let's draw another picture to help us let's say fill 
needs a colour. We're getting the colour from the random instruction which works on a list. Comma, comma, comma. That list is just a list of three colours, or more colours if you like. One colour, two colour, three colour. So a list is a list, in our case, a list of colours. Random is picking one of those colours. Let's say it picks this one. That's then passed all the way up to fill, which expects a colour, so we'll set that as the fill colour. Sounds complicated, it's not really. <laughs> it just looks complicated on the screen with all this code. Let's try it. Yeah, hey, that is very nice. I think that is really nice. I think this is probably the first piece of algorithmic art that we've created that I would happily print out and make into a, a picture to frame and put on the wall. I really like that. Yep, <laughs> I can't get over how much, it's, how much I like it. <laughs> Fantastic. That's really nice. So all we've done is used the repeat instruction to call a function bubble. And in the bubble, we've not done anything particularly fancy. We've just picked a random location on the canvas and drawn uh, a circle of a random size. And those random ranges this time have had a minimum and a maximum. We've picked um, a random color from a list, a palette, and that's it. Not too complicated. And we've come up with some lovely, lovely bubbles like this. Fantastic. Great. Well, I hope this example has inspired you more than the perhaps last one on why the repeat instruction is really useful. And we've looked again at um, randomness as well and really used it to help us design a really lovely image. Have a go yourselves. Um, experiment, play. It's the best way to learn. Things will go wrong, but nothing will really break. Um, and have fun. Um, I think we're now at that stage now where we're really starting to have some fun. <laughs> okay, see you next time. Bye.